Hey, I'm Will Gadd. Welcome to BD Tech Tips. And today it's all about how to fix your picks when you hit rock. Maybe you're on the last pitch of the Uba death horn and you swing through the thin ice too many times and ding them. Or you just find a rock where you didn't think there was one. Inevitably, you're going to ding your picks. And here's how they work and how to fix them and get them back so they're functional as long as they, as they can be. You can get really specialized in your pick filing, like the middle pick here for um, hard dry tooling. But overall, day in, day out, the factory setting is pretty good. There's a lot of people that have thought really hard about that pick's exact geometry. So you're probably not going to do a lot better than getting it back to close to factory. So picks have a, a few different components to them. The most important part is this first kind of two centimeters, one inch up here at the front. And this is shaped nicely as a bevel, so it cuts the ice as it goes in. It doesn't just blow it out of the way. And then it's got a long front tooth here that actually is the part that is doing most of the work when you're ice climbing. You want that part in the ice, and that's why it's slightly steeper than the others. You want that catching in the ice and holding, and then you've got some more teeth back here that'll grip when you're into deeper placements. Even if you're just swinging into straight, pure ice, you know, these teeth will help some, but it's actually this part's doing most of the work, as near as I can tell. So most of the time, you're just trying to restore the first kind of centimeter or so, and then if it's gotten really bad, you're trying to restore, restore the teeth back here. If you want to do a good job sharpening your picks, you need a high quality flat file, not some Wally World 599 special, like go and spend some money, get a good one. It'll outlast many, many picks. These teeth have to actually cut the steel on your pick. It's not rubbing, it's not sandpapering. You want to cut the steel and only a decent file will do that. So a nice, good, solid, the bigger, the better to a point um, flat file, and then some chainsaw files for radiusing the teeth along the pick so that you don't get those sharp angle stress problems and your pick won't break. But these are pretty critical. You can't really do a great job sharpening picks without at least a good solid flat file and these guys here, chainsaw files. And I might be tempted to use a grinder. It's fast, haha, -ha. but you lose the temper in the steel and then these things just don't hold very well. They can either break or they become so malleable that they just bend. Don't, don't use any power tools unless you're working with like Russian steel. So you can see all the little burrs along the top of it here. It's no longer a nice sort of ax shaped. It's been beat in and flattened out. Then I've got this big burr right on the tip there and I want to get rid of that and restore all of this to factory. So that burr, if you just file that off, you're still gonna have a problem with the front of your pick here. So I'm gonna file it off and then I'm gonna move this tip of the pick back to where that burr end is. I'm going to put it flat and I'm going to put the pick right between my kind of quad and my patella right there. It makes it stable. It sounds dorky and nerdy, but th this works. And then I'm going to take it off. And again, nice smooth strokes. We're really popping it out. If you also press too much here and you have the pick going like this, your file going like this, it's gonna round it out. You gotta hold basically a positive angle that matches the pick like this, or you're gonna end up with itch issues. And you can check your work. It's like I'm filing a bit heavy on this side, so I'm gonna put a little more pressure downward, level that out. So now I've removed that opening burr, and it's a definitely improvement. You can see it's a nice, constant angle, nice positive angle there. Things are looking pretty good, but if I leave it like that, the top of the pick is actually hitting the ice first, and you want the point to hit the ice first. So you can't do that without pulling the handle way underneath it. You gotta file it back to factory spec and make it so that the point hits first and not the top. If this part is hitting the ice first, it's gonna shatter the ice and it's gonna be way more work to get a placement. And also check out the shape of the tip right now. It's quite rounded, and you want something that's positive, that's shaped like a wedge there, that's gonna bite into the ice. If you don't have something positive that's shaped like a wedge, then it's just gonna fracture too much ice and it's not gonna bite properly. This little point up here is super critical to have sharp and organized so that it really bites into the ice when you load it up. So the first thing is to get a stable position to follow your picks. It's nice if you have a vice and a perfect setup, but a lot of the time I'm like in a hotel room or somewhere and I can't do that. 
And I found actually I get better leverage and force to file my picks when I'm in this position versus than having them on a bench vice or something. So most of the time, this is how I do it. Put my tool on my two knees, and then the pick actually goes like into the divot between your quad and the patella. So I've maybe thought about this a lot. <laughs> you know, I've done this a lot. So it gets in there, and that makes it stable. It doesn't rock around. You put your hand on it, and you press down pretty solidly. I've got my foot braced against the chair down there. And then what you want to do is take nice, smooth strokes down the pick. If you're like wobbling all over, then you're going to round it out and it's not going to work right. You've got to really get nice and smooth and let those teeth cut. You can hear them cutting versus that's not really the sound you want. Nice, solid, and you can see just about instantly it starts to get better. Pro move time, so you've done one side and it's starting to get into that nice kind of roughly 45 degree angle. Flip it to the other side and get the pick kind of into your patella and quad right there roughly. Nice and stable, hold it solidly. Note also that I'm keeping the, the file at the same angle. I'm not wobbling it back and forth. That's gonna just make it all rounded and gross. I want a really nice cutting edge up there. So I'm keeping the file super flat Super constant in its angle. Oh yeah. If you look at it straight on, it's got a nice wedge shape to it. That's gonna cut the ice really well rather than just fracturing it and blowing it up. If you look at it from the side, it's pretty good, but we've still got this little piece here where the burr broke off and it won't make for a perfect pulling surface. I want that very, very tip there to be doing the actual pulling into the ice and it's still actually angled this way a bit. So on thin ice or maybe I didn't get a very good placement, that might still pull. So I'm gonna move this tip back slightly further. I'm gonna take it a little bit further that way so that that tip is the very farthest thing forward. And now that I've gotten this pick kind of squared off with my file, it's cutting much nicer. There's no wobbling. Each stroke has taken out a good amount of material. So now this pick is in really nice shape. Have a look at the underside of the pick here and you should see a pretty good, nice sharp bevel and everything's coming to a point right on the tip. So a nice flat surface going into a nice clean bevel. and All the weight is gonna go onto there when you're hanging on it and it's gonna bite into the ice like a pit bull. It's gonna work great. Then if you look at it from the side, it's not all rounded and weird. Everything's coming to a point there. And if you look at it straight on, roughly symmetrical, good bevel going right down to that point. If you've banged up the teeth behind this front tooth here, that's where the chainsaw file comes out. And I'm just gonna clean them up a bit. These have been kind of burred down, worn out. And I'm just gonna take my chainsaw file, just nicely match that radius. Oh yeah, they come back so quick when you do this. These teeth actually make a difference. If they're not sharp, then they don't bite well when you're hooking, especially on like climbs and uray that have been done by a couple hundred people and you're just hooking the dog dishes. If these teeth aren't sharp, then, then it's an issue. So you, you gotta get them nice. You can also cut this back quite a lot and make this just super, super sharp. But if you hit a rock with it, just taking it right down to a complete razor at a very, very sharp point, then you're gonna crumple maybe three or four millimeters of it. So you don't wanna make it so far pointy forward and so sharp that if you hit one rock, it just turns into tin foil for like three, four, or five millimeters back. The ideal thing is about 45 on the front and keeping it pretty close to, to factory spec so it's got enough steel to support that front tooth. If you go too crazy, then you hit one rock and you're just done. So don't do that. This pick has been brought back to pretty much factory spec. It looks really good. It's gonna work really well. But there's a couple of next levels to this. One of them is if you want to dry tool really hard and you want a savage beak on the front of this thing that just hooks on anything. Then you've got to increase the angle of this front tooth. And also I find it useful to radius it slightly. So the super secret file comes out and again, get a good one, but it's actually a file that's shaped a bit like a half moon, and that allows you to radius this front tooth and end up with a really savage high angle beak for super technical dry tooling. So now I can use my little file here 
and I'm just going to nicely rub it in and I'm going to increase the angle on this quite dramatically. Yeah, I'm just using that nice semicircle file to build myself a really radical hook here on the front. You can see how steep that is getting. Still got to move it that way a bit. That's again not quite sharp on the very, very tip. That's where the sports action is and dry tooling is just right there. So I've got to still keep working it in, but we're getting there. Now I've got a tip that will hook on anything. You could put that on a dime and get change back, but it's really delicate too. So I only do this when it's like a really serious red point or I'm going to compete on plastic where I want it to just hook on anything. It's so fragile, but it works so well. <laughs> so this is kind of the advanced tactics for trickery. And then the goal here is to have picks that go into the ice well or dry tool well and you don't fall off. You know, in ice climbing, that's, that's always what you uh, want to do is get to the top without pitching off. So safe climbs and hope this helps.